two-on-ones basically going to be two good guys on the other team trying to attack and score on you. There's a certain way that you need to play this. Number one, you have to understand that the defenseman has two jobs. He's got to stay lined up on the short side post line. He's got to get the pass. Goalie, you got to get the shot. And the communication is important. So as a two-on-one develops in the neutral zone, you have to be screaming out to your defenseman, I got the shot, I got the shot, or get the pass, get the pass. We don't want the defenseman just to go over and bear hug the guy away from the puck, which gives a straight line for the guy to attack the net. And we don't want that for the puck carrier. So to do that, the defense has to stay on the short side line, as you see here in the picture, and make sure at all costs he denies access to that pass. Now, as far as your original depth, how you play this, it's an odd man rush. So you don't want to over challenge and force him to pass. And likewise, you don't want your butt glued to the goal line because he's just going to blow your doors off. So in any successful two-on-one, got to be communication between you and the defenseman. The defenseman has to understand he's got the pass, you got the shot. Now historically, there was only one guy in the NHL that wished it was the other way and coached his D that way, and it was Glenn Hall. And Glenn always believed firmly that if you had the guy forced to pass, more likely for a bobble or a mistake, and uh, Glenn Hall was so comfortable in his lateral movement as one of the originators of the butterfly that he thought he could get there, and in his case, Hall of Famer, he thought he preferred to have the two-on-one be a pass across and force them to do that. Modern hockey, it's all about keeping that guy outside and having him shoot from the wing instead of a backdoor pass for an easy tap. All right, Sean, we want to show the followers and the viewers of this channel three great drills that they can work on to make the goaltenders that they work with or themselves better. First one, I want you to set your stick on top of your net, and this drill is designed to help you work on patience on your edges and not biting on fakes. So here's the setup. You put the goalie mid-crease, no stick, get a bunch of pucks here, and the shooter's gonna set one up, and all these shots are gonna be low. And once I actually shoot the puck, you go down. But I want you to wait out all my cheesy fakes, and don't do a knee drive unless I actually shoot the puck. You ready? And when he wants, he can shoot it. On these last two, bite on the fake, okay? Wait for it, wait for it, okay, last one. All right, drill number two, grab your stick back. I want you to stand right back in the crease here, straight up and down. You're not allowed to move. This is the statue drill, and we do this to help kids work on watching the release because you're not allowed to move. Puck's gonna hit you, puck's gonna go in. Not gonna be a rocket, it's a shooter you can trust, but we do this to make sure you watch the trajectory of the puck. So you're not going down too early, or you're not flinching, and it also helps young goalies that might be afraid of the puck because what it does is it makes you really watch the flight of the puck because I'm sure you're concerned it might be coming at your jock or your head, so you're gonna actually intently watch it which creates the awesome side effect that now you're better at tracking the puck in. So just don't move a muscle, stay there and take what I give you and like it. All right, good job. It's good to do on young goaltenders who are a little premature with leaving their feet. And for guys that are a little gun shy, it helps you get to learn whether you want to trust your gear or not. So the next and final drill, we're going to have some pucks here, and we're going to work on some pulls. So what we're going to do is put you at the top of the crease, deep stance. The shooter is going to place this puck perfectly square in front of you with a perfectly square stick. And then when he feels like it, he's going to pull it diagonally, try to shoot it in the empty net. Here is where you're going to have to project your blocker and try to fill some space and push over into it. Let's try a couple pucks. We're going to go to this side exclusively to start. Ready? And the reason we do this, by the way, NHL guys just don't beat it into coverage. They create open nets if they can. Good blocker projection. One more on this side. up in the top shell. And of course, what we do to our right 
we got to do to our left. All right, same thing over here, but we also got to work on backhand pulls. Ready? Good glove projection, excellent. Nice. Two more. Bring your stick. Last one. Ah, suck on that, kid. Anyways, listen. One thing I want to show, one last little critical error in your butterfly, or sorry, up on your feet. A lot of goalies, when a guy pulls the puck diagonal here, they leave the stick behind him, creating that five hole. So whenever you're pulling on this, let's keep that stick disciplined. Great job. Goalie.